In recent years, a regular tennis season includes more than 12,000 men's matches and 8,000 women's matches at the challenger level or higher. The time it would take for a very dedicated tennis fan to watch all these matches would be more than four years. With so many more matches than available time, tennis fans are spoiled for choice and constantly have to decide which matches to watch live and which to miss. What if we could rate tennis matches in the same way we rate movies? And what if we knew this rating before the matches first serve? Such a metric would be a game-changing resource for helping fans to optimize their tennis viewing experience. There is no perfect formula for defining a must-see match for every tennis fan. Each fan will have preferences about what makes a match more watchable, from specific tournaments to favorite players to game style. But most fans will agree that matches that are more competitive and involve higher quality players will be the more interesting. A must-see rating takes this idea and translates it into a watchability score. Must-see rating equals quality times competitiveness. The first rating component is the quality score, which is the mean of both players' ratings based on ELO player ratings. Each rating measures a player's quality going into a match, and the sum indicates the total quality of the players facing off. The higher the combined score, the better. The competitiveness of the match is based on how much of a gap there is between the two competitors. Therefore, a narrow gap where little differentiates the two players would strongly indicate a tightly contested match. Using the ELO prediction formula, we can translate competitiveness into a match prediction on a scale from 50 to 100%. With this scoring system, the most competitive matches with a 50-50 win chance get the highest score of 100%. On the other hand, a highly lopsided match receives the lowest score of 50%. Thus, less competitiveness results in a fractional score, which acts as a penalty to the total quality score. For example, a match with a quality score of 2,000 that is only 90% competitive will have a must-see statistic of 1,800, the competitiveness being an effective cost of 200 quality points. This heat map shows how the must-seeness of a match, as measured by the must-see rating, varies with quality and competitiveness. Is the must-see rating good? Well, if the must-see rating does help to distinguish more interesting from less exciting matches, there are specific properties it should have that we can put to the test. The first is how the must-see rating progresses with each round. Tennis tournaments use seeding and knockout design to serve better matches in later rounds, and this usually works, at least on average. So any measure of match watchability should show increasing watchability with each round. This chart looks at the must-see rating distribution for all men's top professional matches in 2021. What stands out is a clear shift in the center of the rating distribution as we go from the earliest to the later rounds of tournaments. So, for example, in best of three matches, the average must-see rating is around 1,500 for qualifying rounds, but rises steadily to 1,900 for the finals of events. The increase is even starker for the majors, with the average must-see rating at 2,200 in finals. We find the same trend for women's matches with a near identical progression to what we see in men's best of three. If fiercer battles tend to produce the most watchable matches, we would also expect a must-see rating competitiveness score to correlate with a close match scoreline. The game margin is the difference in the total games won by each player and is one way to judge a close scoreline. Comparing the average competitiveness score of best of five matches decided by five games or fewer compared to more lopsided matches shows that they consistently have greater competitiveness. In fact, for round 16 and later rounds, close matches typically have a 10 point greater competitiveness score than other matches. Another measure of a close match is whether they went to a decisive final set. Once again, we see the competitiveness scores of must-see matches as good indicators of a close match. For the WTA, the competitiveness scores of three set versus two set matches are nearly three to four points across rounds. Some of the most compelling evidence for the utility of the must-see rating is to look at the matches it would have put at the top of its leaderboards before the match was ever played. Because the rating is most needed in earlier rounds where the viewing choices are more plentiful, 
Let's consider the top 10 must-see matches in the first or second rounds of the 2021 season for men and women. We can see the majority of these matches were hard won and the competitors' names should be well known to any regular tennis fan. Therefore, from these examples, the must-see rating would appear to be a reliable guide for picking where to tune in.